Perfect. Well, welcome. We are backstage, or not backstage, at the Media 10 of Boston Calling with our friends from WERS. We are joined by our first wonderful guest of the day, Josephine from Wonder. I see what you did there. Wonderful. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. I'm sure that pun never gets old, does Never. It? Never. never. <laughs> well, well, that's good to hear. It's it's just sort of like having the last name Morrissey in the... Uh, yeah, in this, I bet. You know. Did you change it? No, I promise it was my real one. <laughs> um, but I cannot wait for your set today. Um, who are you guys looking forward to seeing? Oh, so many people. Um, Majid Jordan is someone that I've never seen live, so I'm really excited to see them. Um, a Place Like This was one of my favorite songs when it came out. Um, obviously, the XX are playing after us, uh, Mumford & Sons, so it's a good good lineup today. Exactly, and a lot of uh, representation from uh, across the pond as well, which exactly. is nice. Exactly, Brit Takeover. Brit Takeover, and you know what? In Boston, that usually isn't taken too kindly, but this thing is sold out, <laughs> so that's good. Um, the question I've been asking everyone this festival is, do you remember the first time either you went to a festival either as an artist or as, um, you know, just sort of to hang out? Oh, um, yes. I went to a bunch of festivals we have in the UK, which are way more tame compared to US festivals I hasten to add. Really? Um, I thought that, that I thought it was the exact opposite because I know that the fest that's kind of where the festival originated right? You, you can't. Oh I guess yeah there's some festivals I mean I went to one called Latitude Festival which is very like prim and proper and <laughs> you know they have like I don't know boating and stuff <laughs> for like the oh. activities it's really cool um, but I went to yeah those festivals and as, an, as an artist I remember like we've played some insane festivals I remember Firefly was one of the first shows we did as I wonder mm -hmm. and we were just blown away by it. You guys have like the size your festivals are huge, um, which is amazing, isn't it? It's because you get to go and watch loads of other bands after you play. It's pretty cool. Sweet, sweet. And then, so you guys started way back yonder on SoundCloud, which, mm -hmm. you know, that's sort of where a lot of bands are coming up. But there, it's sort of a sea of a lot of music. What do you think separated you guys from all the other people posting? Why were people attracted to your music? I have no idea. Um, I guess the fact that, I guess the only thing that di differentiates, the main thing that differentiates us, I should say, is um, our voices. I guess we both sing in unison. Mm -hmm. um, it's a boy girl vocal which I guess not many people are doing or no one is doing right now so um, a lot of people say it feels like a conversation between the two of us which is quite cool when we sing so yeah maybe it's that it's just luck I think good timing and then so uh, you first made this album there was really I don't think a lot of pressure when you the first album just sort of like fun see what see where this goes second album though you guys yes. are on a label you have fans it, it, did you feel the pressure sort of when making uh, the new album which is coming out June 16th yes um yeah, we. I guess we did, but it was a nice pressure. It's a self-imposed pressure. We wanted to make something that was better than the last thing we made, obviously. <laughs> um, and also, there's that sense that people are going to listen to whatever you make, which is terrifying, um, because you're you're making music knowing that there's an audience at the end of it, which I think is quite weird. But but yeah, it, we we relish this opportunity, obviously, because who gets to make music knowing that people are going to listen? Like that's such a privilege. Wonderful. And so, as you mentioned, sort of the boy-girl vocal, you guys collaborate a lot, you and uh, Anthony. How does your musical partnership work? Because because collaboration is tough. Sometimes once people start collaborating, they kind of want to kill each other. How do you guys sort of keep it tame and, and keep it sounding good? Um, I guess we both come from very different backgrounds. So I come from a classical background. Anthony comes from like a, a background of being in rock bands ever since he was 15. Um, so we both bring different things to the table, which means that when we're writing, there's no ego, there's no competition. It's like, you're good at this and I'm good at that. So let's just kind of join forces and make something better. So it's actually a really amazing connection that we have musically. It's, um, it's really, yeah, really respectful I guess is the word that's I like that respectful that's a good one now uh, this, you're sort of in an interesting position because you know what the your new album ultra life sounds like we don't yeah. <laughs> so if you could describe that in one word oh. how does the album sound and you can explain why you chose that word or if you need a couple that's fine too but how would you sort of describe it in a word um other than ultra life <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say ultra life damn yeah. it um maybe varied um, because I guess for us we tried to infuse a lot of um, experimentation into the album and try to create a very vari varied um, like sonic palette so there's you know there's a tune like my friends which is just us and a piano it's like a live take there's like a disco tune which is like heavy there is um, one inspired by Adele which sounds a bit like heartstrings there's one inspired by Drake which sounds which is lifetimes and so we kind of tried to get you know loads of different musical color into it Nice, I like that a lot. A varied. Now, was that sort of an intentional thing to vary the different types of songs? Definitely, yeah. We realized that our two vocals together means that you can kind of put pretty much any sound next to it, and it sounds like I wonder, so we tried to experiment. Yeah. Lovely. Who do you think would do a good job covering this record? If you could hand it Ooh, off to someone and have me. them play it. Um, 
I'd love to hear Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers do oh my God, an O Wonder awesome. album. That would be my dream. Yeah. Okay, I can I can totally see that. That'd be a total jam. But you guys have had this like meteoric, or I can never say that word. You've had a large rise to fame, um, sort of like a meteor, however you pronounce meteoric, that. Meteoric, yeah. Meteoric, a meteoric rise to fame. How have you been coping with that? Because I imagine it's tough, um, you know, sort of going from having privacy, having different things, and then just sort of being thrown out into the public eye. So how has that been an adjustment for you guys? Um, yeah, it's unusual. I guess the main thing is that you have no time to yourself anymore. True. Um, because when you do have moments of time to yourself, you know, if you're around a venue and you're out for dinner, there'll be fans in the vicinity and they'll be like, hey, can I get a photo? And you're like, oh yeah, I'm in a band. <laughs> so the one thing that I think is is, is bizarre is that you, you never forget that you're in a band. You're never just like Josephine hanging out, you know, <laughs> doing some decorating at home. That doesn't happen for us anymore. We're constantly working, which is amazing in itself. But um, obviously like the, the pros outweigh the cons, so we can never complain. Like it's, we're making music for our living. It's amazing, yeah. And then, so this album, I understand, was written in New York, correct? Half of it was written in New York, and half of it was written in London. So, how did that sort of writing in New York recorded in New York too a little bit? Um, we recorded it all in London, actually. Recorded but in London, okay. Was writing in New York was that an influence in itself, sort of being in the states, being in New York City of all places? Definitely, it was a really conscious decision. So we took a month out and rented like an Airbnb oh, and took lovely. a piano out and um, just wrote like a bunch of songs, six of which ended up making the record. And um, it was really important to us to kind of throw ourselves into a new environment that felt kind of familiar. We love New York City. We, you know, we go there quite a lot, and um, we feel really comfortable there. Um, but equally, it's you know it's the most energetic, vibrant, diverse city for us in the world. So um, we wanted to take inspiration from from everything it had to offer, and it was just a good excuse to kind of like sit home, write songs, and eat food because New York food is the best food ever. <laughs> no, it is. It totally is. Especially yeah. the one dollar pizza. You can't beat it. I know. We had it like on Tuesday, Wednesday night when we were there. It was so, oh my god, so much pizza. We ordered like a whole pie to ourselves. It's amazing. Oh, you should have brought some back. I, I can't. I can't hold it against you. And though. cold pizza. That's even better. Cold than pizza is better. <laughs> Warm pizza. I, okay, we, we are in unison on this. We have settled this debate. I am very happy. Um, so this will be one of my last questions. It's another one of my favorites. If there is a song that you wish you could take as your own, you wish that you wrote that song, making mm. a No Wonder song, what song might that be for you? It would be A Case of You by Joni Mitchell, which I think oh. is one of the most beautiful songs. Just that lyric, I could drink a case of you and still be on my feet, is unreal. So I would have wish I'd written that. Yeah. Nice, nice. And then who are you listening to now? Who is uh, sort of making it into your iPod? Oh, so many. Um, we're listening to Feist's new album, Pleasure. Um, Sigrid is a up-and-coming um, Norwegian singer. She's killing it. She's doing. She's um, performed on James Corden last night, I think, here in the US. Um, she's got a great song called Don't Kill My Vibe. Um, yeah, there's loads of great new music at the minute um, that we're that we're indulging in. Um, who else? I don't know. Feist. That's all we're playing. <laughs> Feist. Perfect. Well, mark your calendars. June 16th. That is when A Wonder's new album comes out. You definitely don't want to miss it. Josephine, thank you so much for chatting with thank us today. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it.